Hey guys, welcome to the Commander Lounge. Um, I really did want to get you guys a Commander deck tech my first video back, but unfortunately I'm still waiting for some cards uh, for my new Commander, uh, for my new Commander deck. So eventually I'll show you that, but right now I'm going to show you guys a new Pauper deck I built. I actually decided to build this deck once I found out Peregrine Drake wasn't being banned. Um, that card is very unfortunate for Pauper. Um, they banned Cloud of Fairies, but then they print... Uh, Peregrine Drake, which um, absolutely warped the format. It really did. Um, Mono Blue Delver was always at the top top of the uh, the list in the meta games on MTG Goldfish. Uh, on on MTGL, it used to be considered the the most played deck, uh, but now uh, Blue Red Drake is the most played deck, which is very 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 fast for something for just being from Eternal Masters and already doing that much of an impact to the format. Uh, it's doing that. It really made me mad that um, Teamer Tron, it took away that deck and it made it obsolete and um, turned it into a Drake Tron deck, which, you know, it makes more sense with the type of lands, what you're doing and stuff, but it still made me angry. Didn't want to play that kind of a deck. I really liked Teamer Tron as it was. And another thing I didn't like, even though I hate playing against Mono Black Control, it pretty much took Mono Black Control completely out of the metagame. It made it uh, not a tier 1 deck anymore. So, in my response to Peregrine Drake still being out, I was like, well, what are we going to do against, uh, like, a controlling combo deck, you know, that's going to pretty much either try to lock you out or get infinite mana to do infinite things and be like, okay, sweet. I decided to build Pauper Eggs. Uh, so, this is my Pauper Eggs deck tech. Um, the, the reason why I thought this would be good against the metagame is because it, I, I'm thinking, you know, if I'm just going to try to combo off first. I'm not going to worry about your deck most of the time. I'm just going to try to do my thing and try to win the game through um, through Solitaire, I guess. So if you, if you guys like decks where you're playing your own deck mostly, you're not interacting as much, you will love this deck. And if you guys don't know what Eggs is, uh, Eggs, it's called Eggs because it uses, this deck uses, utilizes a bunch of artifacts that um, you can you can either pay mana or you can just sacrifice it uh, for an effect. And usually when you do that, you get to cantrip, which that means a uh, draw card or replace it. It basically replaced itself. Uh, so you call it eggs, so you're basically cracking a bunch of eggs and getting more eggs and cracking it and stuff like that. And and uh, through that, you'll combo out and trigger damage and stuff like that. I'll, I'll show you how, how this, this specific eggs build uh, wins. Uh, so let's get into the lands. Uh, we run... For Seat of Synod. By the way, this is a Grixis Eggs deck, so it uh, uses uh, blue, red, and black. Uh, four Great Furnaces. Run all the artifact lands. It's really important, especially with Fireweaver. Uh, four Vault of Whispers. And three Dark Steel Citadels. It's important against um, that Gorilla Shaman that uh, that blows up lands to run Dark Steel Citadels, because that can just wreck your plans in Eggs. Um, so the first creature we got, we have Ethereum Sculptors, uh, this deck is, I mean, this card is pretty much the linchpin of the deck, like, I honestly wish I could run two more cards that had this, have this effect, because it, it, then it would just make the deck so consistent, because this deck is so important, because it makes all your, uh, pretty much all your eggs free, I think there's only two eggs in my deck that, that only makes it, uh, cost one after this guy's out. But the rest of the eggs, they're coming out free, so you'll be able to just drop them all uh, as soon as he comes out. Uh, drop them into play. So we run four of him because he's so important. I wish they'd print two more, uh, well, another another set of these cards, except different name in common. Uh, then this deck would be amazing. Uh, next thing we run is Lotus Petal. Uh, if you guys didn't notice... I'm running uh, only 15 lands, and the reason why I'm only running 15 lands is because I have all these Lotus Petals. Uh, it's just really good. I mean, it's not like an official egg because it doesn't cantrip, but it does sacrifice itself, which will uh, trigger the Disciple, and it will also go into your graveyard, which is really important in this deck. So yeah, uh, full play set of Lotus Petals. Next is Conjurer's Bobble. Probably my favorite egg uh, because it's it, when Ethereum Sculptor's out, it's free to bring out, free to sacrifice, draw a card. It, it's basically just a free draw a card, do a thing. Um, the ability doesn't seem that relevant, but it's it's actually it's actually pretty good. Um, I really when when you use this ability, you really don't want to be targeting your artifacts. If I have to target an artifact, usually I try to target another fellow uh, Conjurer's Bobble. But most of the time, you're going to be uh, targeting thought casts and targeting like maybe a creature that died or a land that was destroyed or something like that. But most of the time, you're going to want to target Conjurer's Brabble 
But if 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 not, if those aren't your options, and try to get like a good good card like Chromatic Star or something that's pretty good to put on the bottom of your library. It doesn't seem too relevant. It could be, I guess. All right, so the next egg is Chromatic Star. It basically uh, you pay one or free with Ethereum Sculptor uh, to bring out. Then you pay one, sacrifice it to add one color of any mana to your mana pool, and it also draws you a card when it hits the graveyard, which is very important. So more eggs. Um, and then one chromatic sphere, which is basically like a star, except uh, you draw a card as as you know as an activation of the ability, not the trigger in the graveyard. So um, so yeah, we run four of those, more eggs. Uh, Terrarion, not the greatest egg. Um, I really like it turn one. I'm only running two because uh, honestly, when you're trying to combo off in this deck, it's just it's just rough seeing this as a top deck when you're trying to go off uh, because it enters the battlefield tapped. You can't really do anything with it that turn. Uh, but, you know, when you can use it, uh, you know, it's free with Ethereum Sculptor or it's one. And then you pay two, uh, tap sacrifice. Add two mana of any color combination uh, to your mana pool because the color isn't, I mean, the the eggs that sacrifice to do things with colored mana is so important in this deck because you're not going to, mana-wise, you're not going to always have like, you know, the Grixis color combination on turn three. It's very important to have color fixing in this deck, and that's why these eggs are so good. Um, and this card also, when it goes in the graveyard, you draw a card, so cantrips. Uh, because we don't want to run a full play set of Terrarion, I thought uh, the late game answer would be Elsewhere Flask. So hopefully Terrarion in the beginning, and then Elsewhere Flask late, late game. Um, it's not a free egg with uh, Ethereum Sculptor. It will only cost one. Uh, when it comes into play, you can you draw a card, which is nice, so you can grab more eggs. Um, but this card is really good because when you sacrifice it, it turns your lands basically into the basic land type of your choice until end of turn. And that's so important with uh, this spell I got in the back, which is one of the finishing games, which we'll get into. But it's it's a red red spell, so it makes sure that you're you know you get the colors you need when you need it. Um, after sideboard, it's extremely important with this salvo because a lot of people are going to want to counter that spell with uh, having that plus pyroblast. Uh, elsewhere, Flaska allows you to keep up all the red mana you need, which is a plus. But it also help it just helps you get out stuff when you need to uh, if you don't have if you can't. Um, get the colors elsewhere. Uh, next eggs are not, they don't have to deal with mana, now we're dealing with damage and other things. Uh, this is our damaging egg. So it's one or it's free with the Ethereum Sculptor. You can pay red, sacrifice it to basically shock something. And then uh, you can pay one and sacrifice it to draw a card. So it's either just an egg that grabs you more eggs or it's an egg that can, you know, kill something, uh, kill the player. Uh, it's actually really good. Like with how much incremental damage you do throughout the game, uh, sometimes this could be just the wind spell. It could be the something that triggers disciple and then does you know three damage total to the face. Uh, so we run a full play set. Aether spell bombs. Uh, usually this is the spot for galvanic blast, but I honestly wanted this deck to be half, almost half. Like I was trying to get half uh, sacrificial eggs in the deck, but unfortunately. Could, well, I mean, I pretty much do have half. I think there's 28 sacrificial uh, artifacts in this deck. Uh, and this one, uh, you could, you know, it's either free with Ethereum or one. And you pay uh, blue, sacrifice it, return target creature to its owner's hand. And you can pay one, sacrifice, and draw a card. I, under, I don't understand why a lot of people weren't running these main boards in the past. Uh, because they, they do so much. Like, they can either return a guy that's about to kill you, or they can return your Fireweaver Disciple Ethereum Sculptor that's keeping you from doing your combo. And you can return that to your hand in response to a kill spell. So yeah, it's it's an eggy things that protect eggy things. I like it. Egg for spell bomb, spell bomb. We run a full play set. Uh, because Ethereum Sculptor makes pretty much everything free, and because you're going to drop all those eggs out to do your thing, uh, you're going to run out of gas. And the best way to keep up with that is Thought Cast. Uh, we run three of those. I was thinking about putting Ponder in these in place because the Ponder is like, it's insane in the beginning of the game. Turn one, I mean, of course, turn one Ponder in any deck's fantastic, but in this deck, like, you really do want to kind of grab your combo pieces. But I eventually was just like, Thought Cast, it, it needs to be Thought Cast. Because, I mean, you can you can Thought Cast pretty consistently on turn two, which is really good. And um, it's just, I think you just want more cards than the dig with this deck because the deck's pretty consistent. I just wish we had more types of Ethereum Sculptor-like effects. That's the only thing I'm a little salty about with this deck. And the next card, they're upside down. Are they all upside down? Sorry, guys. Well, we're going to flip these back up. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff with eggs. We're playing them for free. We're cantrip and doing all of our things. Uh, we need a way to kill the player. So these are the cards that kill the player. First one is Disciple of Vault. One black, one one. Whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from play, you may have target opponent lose one life. Um, very great. So many different types of sacrificial artifacts in this deck. It's going to trigger a bunch. Now his new buddy from Kaladesh, Mr. Uh, Fireweaver, a.k.a. probably my favorite card in Kaladesh so far, um... It, it's it's one red, one colorless. It's a one three, which is insanely important against the aggro matchup because they pretty much crush this deck. Um, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fire Waver deals one damage to each opponent. That is just so important. Like, like you play Ethereum Sculptor turn two, Reckless Fire Waver, and then just like drop your hand. Like sometimes that's like it's like like three to four damage to the face right off the bat. And that's without, like, trying to go off or anything. Uh, you know, having multiple of these Fire Weavers are just nuts. Having, I mean, the, the game plan is to have one of each uh, is really good just because you can enter, you know, play land, one damage, play egg, one damage, sacrifice egg, one damage, you know, do your eggy things and, and just go crazy with it. It's, it's just so much fun. It's insane. Um, so, yeah, these are the guys that are pretty much going to um, do the incremental damage to pretty much finish the game. Um, but if that doesn't work, or if you can't get all the damage in in time, and you close it out quickly, uh, Scrapyard Salvo is our last two cards that, that finishes the game. It's two red, one colorless. Scrapyard Salvo deals damage to target player equal to the number of artifact cards in your graveyard. Uh, you know, in the past, Eggs deck, a lot of people ran a full place of these. Uh, we only run two because Fireweaver and, um, the Disciple, they can pretty much close out games by themselves. We don't exactly need Scrapyard Salvo all the time. Plus, uh, Scrapyard Salvo is, um, it gets, it will get countered a lot, I believe. It's, it's a good target to counter, uh, to say, like, I'll win the game now. Um, so yeah, that's why we run two of these. It's, it seems, it seems pretty good. Uh, so yeah, now let's go into the sideboard. Uh, so, first off is Diabolic Edict. We run three of those against, um, against, uh, whatchamacallit, Boggles. Because Boggles is extremely fast and we can't target it, which is a problem. So, uh, hopefully Diabolic Edict uh, takes care of it before they kill me. Uh, next spell is another Eggy, which is Nile Spellbomb. Uh, this is against your any blue-black control decks that's, you know, getting crazy with AK or about to get Angler out. Any Dredge decks that always want Angler and maybe they give a hoot not to pollute. Uh, with Hooting Mandrills, uh, you, you want these guys. So, um, yeah, three Nile Spell Bombs. Uh, next is Vidalkin Sir Talk. I actually saw this in a deck on YouTube and decided to put him in just because I think it's good against the Affinity matchup because you can keep on tapping down Atog, which can be very important, and also tapping down their lands, which I know um, the Gorilla Shaman, or the, the one Shaman can just, the Gorilla, or the Ape, or whatever it is, can just take care of their lands real quick. But I like tapping it down, tapping down a creature. And you could also put, like, maybe a one or two of these against the, um, the blue-black control matchups where Angler and Delver is the only thing they're getting in with, maybe. So, it's a thought. Um, I'll see how these do. I'm not entirely certain about this card. <laughs> Next is Dispel. Uh, mainly against the counter matchups. Uh, they're just counter spells against, uh, you know, if you need to get that Salvo out and they don't want they don't want you to win the game. This is, uh, yeah, we're going to try again. We're going to try to win the game again. So it's important. It's also really good against uh, just people trying to remove your combos. You know, this is always going to go in against removal heavy decks, like probably like, um, what is it, the Boros, the new Boros deck, which I actually built a while ago. Um, Kadolfa Boros. It's really good against Kadolfa Boros because it, it says no to the burn spells to keep your combos going. Uh, next is, is we run two Dispels and then two Pyroblasts. Pyroblasts are just so important. Like counter Paragon, Drake, kill, kill Delver. You know, all kinds of things. It does all... You know, you're always gonna... It feels like you're always gonna be facing blue, especially now that, um... Blue, red... Uh, now that Drake's a thing, you're gonna be seeing blue a lot more. You know, you already saw blue a bunch. Power Blaster, automatic... If you're playing red, you're playing Power Blast in every deck you play, so... Running two of those. And then the last sideboard card is Krark Clan Shaman. Sacrifice an art... It's one mana for a 1-1. One, one. Sacrifice an artifact. Uh, Krark deals one damage to each creature without flying. This is insane against elves. This, this flicks off elves. This is a goblin that flicks off goblins, which is cool. Um, this is just a sweet card. Uh, you're not going to be putting it in against Delvers and stuff like that. I think it's actually pretty... I think you may want, want to run one or two against the affinity matchup just because it can take care of huge things in a good spot. Uh, I just think it's a hilarious card, and uh, I, you know, I'm excited about it. I mean... You know, I thought about putting electricries and stuff in there, but I was just like, nah, this guy's hilarious. So uh, we're running him instead. 
So yeah, that is my Pauper Eggs deck. So this deck is a lot of fun. I don't know. I've been testing it out lately. I haven't been testing it really. I've been kind of like solitaring it lately. But I'm going to be... I'm trying to get matches in as soon as possible with my buddies at local game stores and stuff. But um, it just seems like so much fun. I mean, it, this deck, uh, it... it it can punish you. This is a this is a deck where cho there's a lot of choices you have to make, and and what was the right choice? Like which color should I go for in this spot? What do I hope to draw into? Like there's a lot of choices you're gonna be get, you're gonna be doing like guessing and stuff a lot of the times, and you're gonna be you're gonna be rewarded. You're gonna feel like an absolute genius when you get the color right that you're guessing when you're cracking eggs. But uh, but everyone you will punish yourself. This deck punishes you. Uh, for messing up, but sometimes it, you know, I can't, I don't think it keeps up that great with the aggro matchup. I think it's really good to tr try to go against, uh, like a deck like Peregrine Drake that tries to, you know, control and then combo and do crazy things. I think it's just, I think it's a good deck against that, and I feel like that's gonna be most of the metagame is that and Blue Mono Blue Delver. So I, I really like my chances with this deck because I like my fire, I like all, all my stuff doing triggered damage, uh, instead of trying to just win out through damage. Like the, like the Salvo can do, but it really tries to not win through casting spells, which is a problem in a, a very uh, crazy metagame where counter spells are fantastic. <laughs> like, Mono Blue Delver is so hard to get your spells you want out, and Peregrine Drake, I haven't faced it yet, but it's probably real tough to play against, and I just hope this does something with that. I can't wait to get it up on MTGO and play it. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you guys like combo decks, if you guys like cantrips in general, like, I am a huge fan of cantrips for anything. Spells, artifacts, anything. Play this deck. This deck is a ton of fun to play. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about, uh, about this deck tech. Uh, let me know if there's different changes or different cards you think of putting in it to make it better. Um, let me know how you guys' pre-release went. My pre-release was fantastic. I actually hustled, got to play, like, four of them or something throughout the two days. Uh, that I want, and I actually, in a conspiracy pack, I opened a foil uh, show and tell, which is nuts, but yeah, guys, um, just let me know what you guys think of the video, like, favorite, and subscribe, and take it easy, guys, bye, bye.